The question asks, enthalpy changes for the following reactions can be determined experimentally. So we have three reactions and their enthalpy changes are each uh, listed here. It says, use these values to determine the enthalpy change for the formation of NO from the elements. An enthalpy change cannot be measured directly because the reaction is reactant favored, meaning that these are favored more than this. And since we cannot determine the enthalpy change directly, we have to calculate it using Hess's law. Okay, so there's a couple of things that have to be done here. So the first thing is we have to talk about how to add reactions with Hess's law. And the second thing is we have to talk about how to manipulate the enthalpy changes with Hess's law. So what I'm talking about here is how do we manipulate these numbers to do what we want them to do. Okay, so the first thing I want to look at is I have, um, I need to cancel out some stuff. So what I ultimately need to do in adding my reactions is I need to cancel out so that the only thing I have left are nitrogen, oxygen, and NO. So right here I have nitrogen, right here I have oxygen, right here I have oxygen, here I have NO. And so what I need to do is add these three equations together in such a way that everything else cancels out. Let's take this um, theoretical uh, chemical reaction where we have the chemicals of A and B combining to form a new chemical C and then we, we have another reaction where C and D combine to form the chemical E. In this case we can add reactions. The first thing we want to do is anything that appears over here and, over, and on this side we can cancel out and then we take all of the things left still on this side and we combine them together. A plus, D, A plus B plus D yields everything that's still left on this side yields E. Let's make this a little bit more complicated so we can uh, look at how numbering is used. In this situation we have A plus 2B yields 3C and then in this equation C plus one-third D yields E. We know that we could possibly cancel out C because C shows up on both sides of the equation, but here we could only cancel out uh, two or one of the C's because there's only one over here. But if we multiply this entire equation by three, then we could cancel out both of those. And so we would get three C plus D yields three E. And in that case I could cancel out, sorry, I could cancel out that 3C and that 3C and my final equation would be A plus 2B plus D yields 3E. But we have a problem that we have to overcome when we multiply because our enthalpy changes are only calculated for a given equation. For example, suppose in my imaginary formula that the change in enthalpy for the first equation is negative 10 and the change in enthalpy for the second equation is negative 20. When I multiply the second equation by 3, so I have 3c plus d yields 3e, then I have to multiply my change in enthalpy by 3 as well. So the change in enthalpy in this equation is going to equal negative 60. And then when I add these equations together, canceling out the three C's, A plus 2B plus D yields 3E, then I just simply add the change in enthalpy of the equations, and the change in enthalpy of the final equation is going to be negative 70. Now let's go back and look at the original equation. I know that my equation needs to have N2 or it, and it needs to have O2 in the beginning but and then in the end it needs to have NO but I need to be able to get rid of NH3, H2 and H2O to make this work. 
So I can actually, if I multiply this, I can cancel out, and this is supposed to say NH3, I'm sorry I wrote that wrong. I can cancel out the NH3 from these two equations, but I can't cancel out the H2 or the H2O. And so that's where this third equation comes in. And we can use this like a little bit like algebra. So imagine the situation where we have A plus D B yields C plus D. And then we also have another equation, E plus F yields D. Imagine we want to be able to get rid of D. So what do we do? We can turn this equation around. We'll say that D yields E plus F. And in that case, the enthalpy, the sign will change. So the new change of enthalpy will be positive 20. Then we can forget about we can forget about this middle equation. We can cancel out D and we will get A plus B yields C plus E plus F. And the change in enthalpy will be negative 50 plus positive 20. So the change in enthalpy will equal negative 30. So now that I've identified the chemicals that I need to cancel out, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this equation and turn it around backwards so that I get H2O yields hydrogen plus one half of O2 and the change in enthalpy, I change the sign. The change in enthalpy will equal positive 241.8. Then I can simply ignore this equation and work from this one. From that there, I know I need to have six hydrogens, so I multiply everything by six, and I get six H2O yields six hydrogen and three O2, and the delta H I multiplied by six to get 1450.8. Now I can cancel out and add these equations together. So I'll have this on the reactant side, and I'll have the 4NO and the 6H and 3O2 on the, react, uh, the yielding side, and then I add these two numbers together to get the delta H of that reaction. So now I have the formula 4NH3 plus 5O2 yields 4NO plus 6H plus 3O2. Now you notice I have 5O2 on this side and 3O2 on this side. That means I can simply cancel this out, subtract it off, and make this a 2. 2O2. And when I add my enthalpy changes together, what I end up getting is five, a positive 544.6. Then the last equation that this problem gives me is that nitrogen plus hydrogen yields NH3 and it gives me the enthalpy change is negative 91.8. You'll notice that I have on this 4, uh, four NH3 at the top and 2 NH3 at the bottom, 3 hydrogens at the bottom, 6 hydrogens at the top. If I multiply the bottom by 2, I'll be able to cancel out both the hydrogens and the NH3. So I get 2N2 plus 6H yields 4NH3, the enthalpy change negative 183.6. So I'm going to get rid of this and work off of the second equation now. I'm going to cancel out my hydrogens, I'm going to cancel out my ammonias, and then I'm going to take all of my product or all of my reactants and write them down. So 2 it's not allowing me to write that, so 2N2 plus 2O2 yields, and then the only product I have left is the 4NO, 4NO, and then I can add my enthalpy changes together. And the thing to remember with adding the enthalpy changes is to keep track of your signs. This is a positive sign, this is a negative sign. So the change in enthalpy will be 361. 
Okay, now that we've got our final equation that we've derived, we want to go back and look at the equation that we're looking for to see, did we make a mistake? So I have 2 into 1 half of N2. 2O2, 1 half of O2, 4NO, and then just NO. You'll notice in every case, the number on top, the coefficient, is four times higher than the coefficient on the bottom. So if I divide this entire equation by four, then I will get this equation. To divide that by four, I also have to divide my change in enthalpy by four. So 361 divided by four is going to equal 90.25. So my, new, my change in enthalpy for this reaction is equal to a positive, a positive 90.25 kilojoules per mole reaction. And these are the three steps that I would boil everything down to. So the first thing is you want to identify the chemicals to cancel out. And in conjunction with that, identify the chemicals to not cancel out because that's really what you're ultimately looking for. Your final equation is going to be the chemicals that you don't want to cancel out. So looking for what you don't want to cancel out will kind of help to simplify things for you. Then use the following rules. So when you add equations, cancel on opposite sides. When adding equations, add the enthalpy changes as well. When you multiply equations, multiply the enthalpy changes. When you divide equations, divide the enthalpy changes. So whatever you do to the equation, whatever you do to the coefficients, in your equation, you have to do that to your change in enthalpy as well as far as multiplying and dividing go. Then lastly, when you reverse your equations around, you also have to change the sign on your enthalpy. So a positive becomes negative or a negative becomes positive.